Hello and welcome, my name is Lexi and today we're taking a look at some new brushes from Refer. These, I mean, look, look at this. This is their holiday brush this year and this is something very new and very, very special. I cannot wait to share more information about it. We also have a couple new eye sets and we're also gonna be taking a look at Esum's latest offerings. So they have released another eyeshadow palette this is number four, Elevate. So we've got quite a few demos with this palette. We also have their new liquid eyeliner. So let's start off with the brushes. Now first I'd like to say a great big thank you to both Refer and Esum because these new products featured here today were gifted to me by these brands. Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. And I wanna start off with this Refer holiday brush. Now, it is Ruffer's fourth anniversary, and in addition, they've also reached 100,000 reviews. So it's a huge milestone marker for them. So this brush is actually intended to be a thank you to the customer base, and let me explain why this is so worth it. So first of all, we have a Sakura Cherrywood handle here, and you can see that our shape is more geometric than our traditional Ruffer shape. We do have Ruffer on one side, and then over here, we have a Maki Sakura, um, you know, artwork here. And this is all done by hand by Japanese artists. It is really beautiful. Hopefully that is coming through clearly on the camera, but you have kind of this gold filigree line and then you have the cherry blossoms here. This is, you know, it looks like a, you know, traditional shape for a cheek brush. This is actually a very versatile size because you can use it for spot targeting for powder, blush, bronzer, and so forth. So we'll take a look at demos of that, but let me explain why I think everybody wants to run out and get this brush. When we're talking about natural goat hair brushes, Typically, if you see a brush labeled just go hair, a lot of times it is just Sokoho or it's a combination of Sokoho and potentially Psychoho. And we've got three main tier levels. So Sokoho is going to be your lower level. Psychoho is, you know, kind of in the mid level. And this is where most of your Sonia G brushes fall. And then we have Saibikaho at the very top. And this is going to be a very rare, very soft brush type. And brushes with this type of hair typically are going to cost, you know, it, they, they can be very expensive. Like we're talking like 300, 350 to start all the way up. You know, I've seen them in the thousands. And so for a brush that is about this size with this length of hair and so forth, I would say the most comparable brush that I've seen is about $350. And, um, you know, I have to double check, but I believe that was a Coyoto brush. So yeah, you know, it's definitely a hefty investment, but it's a very rare hair type. It's very hard for manufacturers to get this, especially with the length. And this brush is intended to be a thank you from Refer to the customer base for their fourth anniversary and for the marker of 100,000 reviews. So big milestone marker for them. Now, this brush is going to retail for 88 US dollars during its launch. So that will be the sale price. The regular price on this will be $187. This is not something that Refer is producing and making a profit on. This is a thank you. So that is why we have a low price for this rare hair type. And you know, it is of incredibly luxurious brush is gorgeous is very very soft and they really wanted to keep it at a price point where it would be affordable for a wide range of people this type of hair is not something that's easy to come by and often has a very very high price tag so i mean i am just honestly i'm flabbergasted when i heard the price on this i was completely shocked at how low they were going to sell this for because you know, I, I had no idea. And yeah, this is just, this is something that I think everybody should. If you've got the funds, I think this is a worthy investment. So let's take a look at the demo of this brush while we talk a little bit about it. 
As I mentioned, Sybica Ho brushes typically run for a lot of money. Now, the closest comparison brush that I've seen is a Koyoto Sybica Ho Sakura cheek brush. It's fairly similar because we do have kind of this geometric handle. We also have a Maki design on there and it's a cheek brush and it retails for $341. So I think that's a pretty comparable brush. Also, Sonia G actually had a Saibika Ho Yakusugi set for $245. Those brushes were a little smaller, but there were two brushes in the set. That was also an incredible deal for that type of hair. So I think, you know, if you're looking somewhere for a brush like this with the handle design and so forth, you're looking probably usually around $250, $300. Uh, you know, on average, it could definitely go up. So I think the $88 price tag on this is just absolutely incredible. Now looking at the size and the shape of this brush, I would say that it is a very versatile brush and it was intended to be that way. So it could function as a small powder brush. So if you are looking to apply setting powder or something in strategic areas on your face, it works very well for that. If it's under the eye, if it's around the nose, if it's on the cheek and so forth. So it's very, you know, it's sized very well for that. It can also work very well as a blush or a bronzer brush. Now we do have kind of a flattened ferrule here, giving this an oval shape. And because of that, you know, you can use this in different ways. So you can use the longer side for blush and bronzer. You could use the tip to kind of add some contour or some highlight. So it's a very versatile brush. Now let's take a close up of the actual shape of this brush. So this is what the brush looks like. And you can see that we actually have our shortest fibers here and we're gradually going up to here and it's a little bit of a rounded flattened top. So it's not completely flat. There's still a little bit of a curvature there, but it gets pretty flat there. And you can see that both sides, again, are gonna have that similar gradient there. And again, you can use this very nicely in a patty motion or a sweeping motion. You could use this on its edge and just get the tip for highlight, press a little harder to get contour in this area. And you can see how it fits under the eye around the nose and so forth. So it's a very, very versatile brush. But honestly, this brush, you know, incredibly soft, beautiful design. I think this is a not only a collector's item, but a very versatile functional piece that you'd wanna use daily. So I highly recommend this brush. I want it, I just couldn't wait to share this with you guys. So again, thank you so much to Refer for sending this to me, but let me share their other offerings that are coming out right now as well. And I wanna mention that Refer is, you know, they really try their best to be very conscientious about sales and deals for their customer base. So the prices for this holiday brush and these sets here are not going to be any lower during Black Friday. You're getting those Black Friday prices now. They just probably won't be available still during Black Friday. So if you're you know, kind of figuring out what you wanna purchase, if you're interested in these items, I would purchase them during this launch now and do not wait for Black Friday because I honestly, I don't know what will be available then. I don't think they will be having restocks and there are only, you know, a limited number of brushes available with this rare Saibika Ho hair. So this brush will have a price of 188 US dollars for its regular price, but it'll be discounted to 88 US dollars for the October 17 launch. Now Refer is also launching two new eye sets. They've had a lot of requests over the years for smaller and larger versions of their classic eye brushes. So that is what they did. We have a mini set and our, you can see that they say mini on the handle here. So we've got five brushes in the set. And then we also have a max set. And these again are gonna be the same five brushes. So we have brushes one, two, 13, 14, and 15 in both smaller and larger sizes. So we're gonna compare these with the originals as well as some other brushes from some other collections as well. 
but let's go ahead and move on to the demos for this. And while we're looking at the demos, we're also looking at the colors in the new Esam Elevate palette. So all of the demos are done with this palette and we'll come back to details about this in a little bit. So these sets of five brushes, they are going to retail for 120 US dollars, but for the launch on October 17th, they will be 60 US dollars. So they will not be available individually right now, but perhaps later they will make these available individually. So, you know, I have to say, I think this is such a great idea. And again, this is just another thing that they were doing to celebrate their 100,000 written review milestone. And I think this is just, you know, it's a great way to show that they're actually listening to their customer base and there's just great functional brushes. As I mentioned, all of these new brushes from Refer are going to launch on October 17th at their discounted pricing. There will be a Black Friday sale starting November 1st. Details of that sale, you know, percentages and so forth, I don't have that information yet, but they will be restocking their other inventory prior to that sale. So just something to note, but again, if you're interested in these sets or the holiday brush, I would definitely purchase them when they launch in October. Plus I personally always like to spread out my purchases as much as possible. So as we're looking at the demos, you can see, I wanted to kind of show you and I, you know, show each of the brushes being used and you can see that you can definitely do complete eye looks with the mini set or the max set, depending on your eye size and shape. Now I would say that in general, smaller brushes typically work better for me for my particular shape and size of my eyes, but you know, depending on how you feel about the others, you might just want one set or the other. Regardless of that, for me personally, I do think that they are great brushes to integrate into what I already have. The smaller brushes are great for detail work and the larger brushes are great for blending out. And before we look at each of these brushes individually and up close, just a few details about this Esam palette that I'm working with here. And this is the Esam Artistry palette in number four, Elevate. These shades all have shimmer. We will do swatches in a little bit, but it is made in Italy. One of the great things about this palette is you can remove the lid completely or you can just slide it to the end. You can rearrange all of these shadows. You know, this, will kind of pop out so you can actually rearrange the shadows you can mix and match with other palettes and uh they do have names on the back so i think that their packaging design is great the shadows are very silky smooth and you know they perform very well they are glittery shades so you might get some fallout from them along with the eyeshadow palette we also have a new liquid eyeliner from Esam. this is currently only available in black but i do hope that they'll bring this out in some other shades particularly a brown i would love a brown in this but we are looking at 0.55 milliliters of product here it's made in korea with a six month shelf life and we have a nylon tip for the liner. So uh, the pen liner is waterproof, it's smudge proof, it's matte black, and it's cruelty free and vegan. And I have to say that this is definitely a smudge proof liner. I mean, it is probably one of the most effective at remaining smudge proof uh, that I've ever tried. So definitely, you know, very, very effective. And it gives you a very nice smooth line. It goes over the shadows, you know, very smoothly as well. Now the eyeshadow palette, by the way, that is also certified clean. It's gluten-free, non-toxic, cruelty-free and vegan. And again, we have 15 different shades here. And I really like the way the palette itself is arranged where that top row is all going to be kind of these light iridescent shades. And then we have a medium row with kind of some brighter, more jewel tone shades. And the third row there, some of those shades are gonna be a little bit deeper. They're all deeper in general, but some of them are gonna be like kind of deeper and a little bit more subdued, whereas others are gonna be deeper and a little brighter, like that last bright blue and so forth. So overall, you know, I think it is 
a really beautiful palette. I love the way it's arranged. You can definitely do complete looks if you love shimmer with these, but this is also something really nice to mix and match with some of their other palettes or perhaps any matte shades that you already have in your collection. So we'll take a look at swatches for that after we finish going through the rougher brushes. But now let's take a look at each of the brushes individually along with the original version. So these are the number one brush. So the one here in the middle is our original. This is gonna be our mini and our max. So you can see we definitely have that size difference there between them. And the shape has remained fairly true. However, my number one, by the way, this is an original from when they launched in 2019 when I uh, I purchased their Kickstarter set. So that's th that's how long I've had this brush here. <laughs> but, um, you know, you can see that it does kind of flare out a little bit more on the sides than the uh, mini and the max, which remain just a little bit more columnar. So let's take a look at these. So here is the max. You can see that it's gonna be a fluffy eyeshadow brush that really, you know, it bends, it flows. You can use this in the crease. You can use this all over as well. This makes a really great one and done shade, especially if you have something larger. This here is the original. You can see this is fluffy. This one for me, because of the size, has always been kind of an in-between crease and lid brush. I usually use this more Again, this can be used for one and done, but anytime I'm using something that I really want kind of blend it into the crease and a bit on the lid, that's what I use this one for. And the mini, you can see, you know, obviously it's gonna have a smaller head, so it's not as fluffy. But for this one, again, you could use this in the crease. I find this one with the size to be a little bit stiffer in the crease, so actually for me, I think this is best for on the lid. It's really great for adding like deeper shades on the edge and so forth, but it's a really great brush. Now I did wanna mention that this Max, you could also use this for highlight. I think it's a little small for that, but one of the eyeshadow brushes that we'll get to, I think does work nicely as a highlighter brush as well. Now, just a few brushes I wanted to kind of compare briefly. We have the Sonia G Worker Pro brush, and you can see how this compares in, let's see here, let's turn that a bit, um, in the shape and size here. This is going to be, I keep turning that. This is going to have slightly different shape. This is more rounded at the top and a little bit more, it's a little bit wider than the mini version. So just something to note there, but that's a fairly close option. And then we have the Sonia G Soft Shader. This is gonna be wider, more square. It's more, it's closer to the original, but a little bit more compact and less fluffy. And then this one here is the Hakuhodo J5523, which I feel like is slightly more narrow version than the original. Um, but it maintains more of that columnar shape like we have in the Max. So a little bit bigger than the Mini as well. Definitely larger overall if you're looking at width. Okay, so here are the number two brushes. We've got the Mini, the Original, and the Max. And you can see that these are all going to be shader cell brushes that are pretty compressed. And this one here is our max. You can see that this is gonna work well, particularly with cream shadows, shimmers, and so forth. It's a little fluffy, so if you want a shimmer to stay exactly where you put it without blending anything out, this one is probably a little bit too fluffy for that, but I think it works really well with creams and liquids, particularly when you kind of buff out the edges a little bit, or if you're working with shimmers and you are trying to get it all over the lid, it works well well for that as well. The number two in the original, you can see is gonna definitely be a little bit smaller here. This is another one that's great for shimmers. And again, though, this is gonna be slightly fluffy. You can see how they compare you know, with their width and depth. So again, this is one that works well for buffing out the edges, but I do think that if you're working with a cream or a liquid and you're buffing out those edges and doing an, a one and done type of thing or a base, the Max is actually a little bit more efficient than the original for that. Now the Mini, this is a great brush for targeting exactly where you want something. If you're using a shadow wet, 
or something creamy or you're working with shimmer shades and you want it to stay exactly where you put it, that's what this brush is great for. You can see this smaller size, the bristles stay really compact and tight in there. So it's soft, yet it's pretty firm. You don't have any fluffiness really. So you're not gonna be able to buff out edges with this, but you're gonna get precision with the mini. Now I wanted to bring out the Refer 28. This one came out just a couple years ago and I wanted to show you how that compared to these. So let's spread these out a little bit. So here's the 28 and you can see that the 28 is gonna be longer and it's actually gonna be closest to the mini. It's a slightly, slightly larger version than the mini. It's definitely longer, but the width is ever so slightly more. And you can see how this one performs. This is also great for shimmers. This will be a slightly larger area. But if you have the 28 and you've been looking for something smaller, the mini is a really great option. I think the two of these function pretty similarly. The other brush I wanted to bring in is the Sony G Lotus Builder Set brush. And this is gonna be closest to your original. It's gonna be slightly smaller than the Zero Two Max. But you can see the Zero Two Max is gonna be a little bit fluffier, a little bit looser. And here is the original Zero Two versus the Sony G. You can see that those are gonna be pretty similar. Now, when we did the Kickstarter, you could choose handles. So I chose some of my brushes to have the handle we just saw and some of them to have this style. So this handle is a little bit longer and it looks a little different, um, but this is our original 13 and we have, let's put them on the same side I had them on before. So here's the mini versus the max. So you can see that we all have these crease brushes. We do have kind of a flattened top on the top of each of these. And you can see that this is gonna stay pretty tightly compacted while you're working with it. So you definitely have some fluffiness to kind of blend out that crease, but it is tight enough, small enough that it's going to stay where you want it. And if we're looking at the length of the hairs, you can actually see our max is gonna be a little bit longer. Our mini is a little bit shorter. So just something to note, and you can see that this mini one here actually really, you know, it, it's small. So if you want something really targeted in the crease, like a cut crease type thing, or if you're looking for detail work on the edge of the eye, the mini is great for that. Let's look at just a few comparisons. Before we look at a bunch of comparisons, I wanted to show you the original 14 and how that compares to the 13 Max, because the original 14 is a little bit bigger than the original 13. Okay, and here's the original 14 versus the oversized 13. You can see that our 14 is ever so slightly longer. It's also got a little bit more curvature at the tip. Uh, it's not quite as flattened. And you can see our diameter for this is actually, just flinging things everywhere today. Um, but the diameter is actually gonna be a little bit smaller. It's more narrow in the 14. So we're actually, it's kind of like if you hold a bouquet of something and you know it's a little tighter, they fan out. So that's more of the shape we're getting with the 14. Whereas this is gonna be a little bit more densely packed. So it's gonna stay a little bit more columnar. So some comparisons, this is the Sonia G Soft Definer. And you can see shape wise, this actually has a bit more of a sharper angle. So we're getting a more pyramidal shape here at the tip compared to the 13. Size wise, it's kind of in between the original and the mini uh, as for the actual you know, diameter, density, and so forth. So you can see how this performs the 13 mini is going to be a little bit more of a tighter feeling than the soft definer. And I feel like it's a little bit, the soft definer is a little bit tighter than the 13. Now the first brush I thought of was actually the Sony G mini booster. And that made me think of the actual max brush here, the 13 max. You can see the diameter of our max is ever so slightly larger than the mini booster. You can see that the 13 Max has a flattened top, whereas the Mini Booster is going to have a more rounded top. So, so as we look at these kind of swirling on the hand, this is our 13 Max. You can see how this is going to flow versus our Sonia G Mini Booster. This feels a little bit tighter. 
So the bristles are actually, you can see how they're staying together, moving as one. Whereas with the, um, the 13 Max, you do get a little bit more of a fan out motion there. And you can see how it compares to the original. They are similar in size. The mini boosts are slightly larger. And again, it's more domed than the original. And one last comparison, this is the Hakuhodo J5529. You can see we have a flattened top, just like we have here. The 13 mini is significantly smaller, so let's move that one out of the way. You can see that that is gonna be closest to the 13 original. They are pretty darn close. So if you have that, but you don't have the 13 original, this is how the max compares. And you can just see, you know, movement wise, is going to be pretty comparable actually with the original. And then here is the 14. So we've got the original, here's the max and our mini, and you can see how these compare. So I would have to say our shape is going to be, it's a little bit more exaggerated of a triangular shape in the mini and the max. Again, this is an original from 2019. So perhaps it has changed slightly since then, but you can see again, how, you know, tightly these stay bundled together when you're working with them. So, you know, you're not going to have too much of a fanning out process. Same thing with this 14 here. It's a really great smaller crease brush. And here's the 14 mini. This one you can see is a little bit looser as it fans out, it's a little bit softer. So you can definitely get in those tighter areas, but you can buff that out a little bit more. Now I did wanna compare just a few. This is the 14 max and the 15 original. You can see that our shape is fairly similar, but the 15 is still significantly larger in diameter here. And this is gonna be a little bit fluffier. And this here is our 14 mini and our 13 original. And you can see again, in this case, um, the 13 is actually a little bit larger. Uh, the diameter is larger, but it's also more flattened, whereas this is going to be a bit more tapered. Now for comparisons, I want to take a look at this Hakuhodo here. This is the Hakuhodo B142. And you can see that the shape of this brush is going to be very, very similar to the uh, shape of the 14s but size wise it is kind of it's gonna be closest to the max here but the Hakuhodo is slightly larger you can see that it also kind of fans out a bit more so here is the Hakuhodo versus the 14 max and you can see that the 14 max everything stays more tightly bundled by the way I have washed these I've used them and washed them and so forth so this is already bloomed and then I want to take a look at this What's a Beauty brush. This is the R102. And you can see here that this is actually, we're gonna take the max out here. So here is the 14 original and the 14 mini. And the R102 from What's a Beauty is kind of in between the two, but our top is gonna to be a little bit more flattened than the 14. The 14 is a little bit more tapered. So again, here, is the 14 max original and mini now here's our 15s so we have our 15 max our 15 original and our 15 mini you can see how these compare again these are going to be a little bit more flattened on top the max is a little bit flatter the original is pretty flat but you can see that our mini actually is a bit more tapered now this here is the 16 original with the 15 max. You can see that our 16 is significantly larger overall. So it's longer, uh, shape is a little bit more rounded, and it's a fluffier brush. Now just to show you how these go, here's our 15 max. You can see this is gonna be fluffy. It will fan out while using it, very, very soft. Here's our original, which is also gonna fan out a little bit, but not quite as much. It's gonna stay a little bit more compressed. And here is our mini, which again, you'll get a little bit of a fan out there, but it's gonna stay fairly compressed as well. And I think it's just, you know, it'll definitely fan out a bit as you're doing this, but it makes a really great buffing brush. Now the 15 Max is the one that I mentioned that I think also works very nicely for a small targeted highlight brush. So it works really well on the cheek for applications like that as well. 
And I also wanted to take a look at the Ruffer 27 brush. So this one here, I wanted to show you how that compared to the 15 Max because these are going to be most, they're, they're fairly close in the Ruffer line. So our 27 actually has a tighter ferrule, smaller in diameter. It's allowing these hairs to actually poof out more. You can see we also have a taper. So we get more of a pyramidal shape at the top versus this flatter, slightly rounded top. So here's the 27. This is gonna be you know, a really great blending brush. I love how you have kind of that tip that you could use very gingerly there to get a little bit more target. But notice how this one performs versus this. Our 27 is definitely gonna be a little bit fluffier than the 15 Max. So that's gonna be it for my comparisons. Overall, I think the sets are great. Let me show them to you one more time. So here's our mini set. We have one, two, 13, 14, and 15. Okay, and here's our max set. So we have one, two, 13, 14, and 15. Overall, I think both sets are great. I definitely recommend purchasing these during the launch and not waiting for the Black Friday sale just in case they are gone. I think this holiday brush though is the star here. So I highly recommend all of these items. I think they are all great additions to your routine, but this is going to be your special collector's item and it's something that's very functional. And again, it's rare and at an amazing price point. So this will be my number one recommendation. And then I think both of the sets are great additions to your eyeshadow brush collection. So let's take a look at the Esum palette. So we looked at some demos, but let's go ahead and swatch all of these. And we're gonna start off, we're gonna go down by column and kind of keep those colors together. And you can see the texture of these. Our first row is always gonna be kind of these light iridescent shades. We start off with this light pink. And then, I mean, look at this, this middle shade here. This is our jewel tone pink. You can see there's, there's no real blue reflect in there, but it looks like there almost is. You know, it kind of plays a little trick on your eyes. And then we have this deeper, uh, more berry pink here. It's gonna be a cooler in tone. So that's our pink column, I think is stunning. The next column, this one's actually pretty neutral. So we have this pale buttery yellow. Again, this is a little bit of an iridescent. I got a little pink in there. There's no pink, let me redo that. Okay, and here's our buttery yellow. And look at that. I mean, it is just a really beautiful buttery yellow shade. Love that color. And then next up, we actually have kind of this melony orange with a touch of red in there. So it's not really a true orange. It's kind of like one of those reddish orange shades, more of a pinkish orange. So it's like a very warm pink with orange in it. And then we have a brown. So this is the only one that's really not a column where you've got the same color just going a little bit deeper each time. This one's a little bit different. It reminds me of the 70s. <laughs> so um, that's what I think of as 70s colors all the time. I'm not sure. I wasn't actually um, born then, but my parents had furniture from the 70s when I was growing up. And then next up, we have kind of this light green iridescent and you can see we've got some gold and some green in there. Our middle shade here is this really pretty shimmery green. Look at that. Like in the pan, I feel like it looks like it's more olive, but when you actually put that on, it's a little bit brighter, more of a Kelly green. And then this last green here, this is more of an emerald green, but when you put it on, you can see it's more of a spruce. So it's a little bit, more muted, really beautiful, versatile, deep shade to have in there. There's no actual like black or gray base to it, but there is, I feel like there is some gray in there. It's just that it's, it's not one that when you swipe it out, you're getting gray. So you do see some grayish tones in there though. Okay, so we have this beautiful like iridescent lavender here. And what I really like about this purple column is a lot of times the purple eyeshadows have a lot of pink. You can see that this middle shade has some pink in it, but 
this one here in the deeper part is more of a blue purple. I love having this mix. I love how these shades go together. You can mix and match them. I think is just a really beautiful, beautiful column in general. Our last row here is gonna be blues and you can see we have this pale icy baby blue. Then we have more of this teal. I love this teal shade. I mean, look at that. That is so stunning. And then we have kind of this brighter cobalt. And this is the Elevate palette. So I really love this. I think it's a great addition to, you know, anybody's eye collection because we've got some shades in here that are a little different from others. Now, as for the packaging, as I said, you can take this, oh, I put that on the wrong way. You can put this on and then it clips in. So you see where it says ESOM here? This is where you wanna pull this open. And then if you wanted to rearrange these, this actually will come out. So there's a little lip here for your fingers. And then these pans are magnetic. You can just pop these out, rearrange them, and they are labeled there. So you know if you wanna put them back, how to do that. Now when you're putting this back in, just make sure that your clip goes into there and that will lock it in place. Now I wanted to show you, this is the new Elevate, but this one here, oh, I have that upside down. This is the Intensity palette. So this is number two. So this one launched before and you can see the difference in tones. These are definitely gonna be shimmers as well. They're all shimmers, but these are gonna be your more muted, more neutral hues versus kind of your brighter wow shades. All right, and last up, this is the new Isom pen liner. And I just wanted to show you how this performs. So here you can make a line. You can see you can get it very thin. You can also get a little thick. One of the great things if you're doing a wing, I think if you put it on lightly here and then you press a little firmer on, you get kind of that perfect shape. I can do that you know, fairly well on my left eye, but not on my right eye. Uh, I'm not great with wings. So I think this is pretty easy to use. And this is a nice, smooth black pigment and it really does stay put. So I'm gonna let this set for a minute and then I'll show you, but let me show you just a couple other liners. This is one of the Suku Nuance Eyeliners. This is shade 102, so it's a different shade here. This has a felt tip, and you can see that this also goes on very smoothly. It's a little bit more liquidy when it goes on, so it does take a little bit longer to set. You can get a very fine point with this. I find this one to be a really great one, very easy. I also like the Dior On Show Liners, and this one here is in green, so let's go ahead and we'll put this one right up here. This one's gonna be a little bit thicker. So if you want a very thin line, it's a little bit harder to do that with the um, Dior, but you can see here, again, another really great liquid liner. Now let's see if the Isom has set yet. It's pretty early, so it might not have set completely, but uh, it's really, here, I'm gonna use my pinky, which you can see is clean. It's really not budging. Look at that. So it sets pretty well, and then it really stays put all day. You can definitely remove it. I've removed it with micellar water as well as oil-based um, you know, eye cleansers. So it works, comes off easily with both of those. You just want to kind of put that on, but with just water, it's gonna stay put. So I hope this was helpful. I'd love to know what you think of the brushes and the Isom items. Again, thank you so much to Refer and Isom for sending me these items. And I hope you have a great day. Thanks so much for tuning in.